In Unity, materials provide the material surface properties of objects. In other words, they tell us how the object looks and how the object responds to different lighting conditions. Materials are used most commonly with 3D objects, and when you create a new 3D object in Unity, you'll see two components. The mesh filter, which contains information on the actual geometry of the object, and the mesh renderer, which is where we're going to assign our material to this object. Materials have two parts. The first is a shader. This is the code that tells Unity how to actually render your object. The second is the material properties, and these are settable by you to customize the look of your material. Materials in Unity are assets, which are saved as files on disk. Because they're assets and are accessible via the project panel, you can reuse materials on multiple 3D objects and in multiple scenes. And in fact, this is the intended workflow for materials. If we were to create, say, a rubber material, we would apply that single material to every rubber object in all of our scenes. Doing so helps the efficiency of our rendering. Unity can batch the rendering of all of the rubber items together, saving time and saving computation. There are three main ways to create materials in Unity. Any time that you create a 3D object using one of Unity's built-in types, it will automatically assign a default material to that object. This default material is not editable by you as a user. If you want to create an editable material, you'll need to do so in the project by right-clicking and choosing Create Material. The third way that materials can be created is when you import 3D models. The 3D model may have an embedded material, which you can then use. By default, these embedded materials are not editable, however you can extract them from the 3D model to edit them. One note of caution is that uh, materials are defined differently in 3D modeling programs than they are in Unity. So when you import a 3D model, the appearance may look quite different, and a lot of the 3D material settings may not transfer correctly. Editing materials can be done two different ways. You can either select the object in the project and edit the material directly, or you can edit the material on one of the game objects in your scene. If you select a game object that has a material, you'll see the material at the bottom. It may be hidden, and you can click to expand the material. When editing a material, you'll see a material preview at the bottom. Materials can be assigned to 3D objects one of three different ways. You can drag them onto the object in the hierarchy, you can drag them to the appropriate slot in the inspector, or you can drag them directly onto the object in the scene. When you do so, as you move around, you'll see a preview of how that material will look when applied to that object. It's important to remember that when editing a material that's assigned to a game object, you are editing the material asset, meaning that all other objects that use that material will also change across all of the scenes of your project. When creating a new material, Unity provides two built-in, standard, physically-based shaders that you can use to define your material. You also have the option to use one of a set of other built-in shaders, or to create your own custom shaders, the built-in shaders are used by Unity for various types of effects. If you've ever worked with particle systems or skyboxes, for instance, you may recognize some of these different shaders. You can change the shader that your material is using by selecting it from the drop-down list. Looking at the standard shader, material properties can be defined a number of different ways. For instance, colors can be assigned by clicking on a color block and selecting the desired color. Textures can be assigned either by dragging the texture into the appropriate slot, or by hitting the small gizmo next to the slot and selecting a texture from your project that way. For the standard shader, Unity will only use the material properties that you actually assign or change. For any properties that are default, Unity will skip these, and that results in more efficient rendering. By adding more material properties, you'll make the shader a little bit more computationally expensive and take a little bit longer to render, but you can create many more different types of materials and different types of visual effects. The normal map property is a little bit special. It requires that your texture be marked as a normal map, which is something that you can do in the texture import settings. The material properties of the standard shader are explored in depth in Unity's official introduction, which is linked below. And that concludes our overview of materials in Unity. How to create materials, how to assign them to objects, how to change their shader, and how to edit material properties.